If you would, this morning, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 46. If you have an old Schofield, that's on page 621. And I've titled my thought for the week is, When Bad Times Happen. When Bad Times Happen. I had forgotten about this, but on December 26, 2004, the world was shocked to hear that a 9.3 earthquake in the ocean off Southeast Asia had caused a mighty Tsunami to crash ashore in several countries and destroy entire towns with the death toll well over 200,000. People begin to, of course, ask and wonder. Where are you, God? How could you let this happen? How could a loving God permit such death when the death toll included many children? In other words, God is to blame. God's to blame for all this. Well, folks, the sad fact is we live in a fallen world and events happened according to the laws of nature. Because of the sin of mankind, there will always be things that happen other than what we would want, which is a perfect earth, a perfect world. There will be troubles and suffering beyond our control. At such times, our comfort must come from God's word. Amen. And here in Psalm 46, I just have two verses I'd like to read this morning, but they are very important. They say so much. You know, a lot of times in God's word, one, one verse almost says volumes. But here in Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, here the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. In today's verse, we find many things, especially three things, that, ha that happened that we can call upon God. One, it, it says God is our refuge. Two, God is our strength. And number three, God is always ready to help in times of trouble. If we could understand these three priorities, we will not have to live in fear. We can respond as a faith-filled person or we can respond as a faithless person. Psalm number one tells us, it says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. A faith-filled person will respond in, three, in, in th these ways. He deletes in reading and knowing God's word. He meditates on God's word day and night. This man of faith understands where he came from and where he is going. He is not one who questions God because of the events of this world. He does not look to the world for the answers of life. He is firmly grounded in what God assures him when the world is seemingly upside down. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 5, he said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Romans 3, 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. I really think Paul says it best in Colossians 2, 8. He starts out that verse with the word beware beware. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. My dear friends, we may live in this world, but we are not of this world. We are just passing through. Amen. Thank you.